This video is sponsored by none other than Paradox. Oh yes, it's happening. Throughout thousands of years of our history, we built our cities organically, corresponding to our needs and daily lives. Streets were narrow at human scale, buildings were close together. Most things were within walking distance, which was a necessity for obvious reasons. But then came the 20th century, and with it, mass motorization. All of a sudden, things didn't need to be as close as before. Why have everything within walking distance when you can also drive? From the first half of the 20th century onward, we abandoned our traditional dense, human-centric way of building cities, that is, by the people, for for the people, and started designing everything around the car. Part of this was a natural development. With cars, people are more mobile, meaning not everything has to be fitted within walking distance. The other side of this story was a massive, unrelenting lobbying and propaganda campaign by the auto industry. Today, it's almost unthinkable that streets and roads used to belong to the people. You could just walk out of a building, onto the road, and your life wouldn't be in danger. Nobody would honk at you, nobody would call the police on you, and so on. Worst case scenario, you had to dodge the occasional horse cart or tram. But this millennia-old tradition of public space belonging to the people all but evaporated in the span of a few decades, all thanks to the auto industry. When the number of cars started increasing, so did the number of fatalities. People still assumed that streets and roads belonged to them, so tens of thousands would die getting run over by cars speeding across the city. There were attempts at limiting car traffic and engine speeds, but virtually all efforts were promptly sabotaged by the auto industry. People and cars were at an impasse, but people weren't about to give up on their public spaces that belonged to them for millennia. This was when the auto industry played the ace up their sleeve in a master throw of manipulation. They started financing and organizing traffic safety education for children, where they learned, among other things, to always look both ways before crossing because roads belong to cars, not people. Entire generations grew up with this mantra, ingraining the idea into everyone that public spaces should be surrendered to the auto industry's four-wheeled products. Car manufacturers also helped twist public discourse via propaganda by popularizing expressions like jaywalking. Back then, jay was kind of an insult along the lines of an oblivious dummy. A jaywalker then became a person who used the roads as we always have, for millennia. It was a way to shame people into accepting the dominance of the automobile inside our cities. And, unfortunately, it worked. Though back then, today's colossal traffic jams didn't exist, so the scale of the problem wasn't clear yet. People didn't yet know about induced demand. Nobody knew how catastrophic the consequences of over-motorization would be. The auto industry's investment into propaganda and sabotaging referendums paid them unbelievable dividends. It resulted in a world where our entire civilization revolves around their product, where governments mandate that every project, every building, every renovation, every family home should have space for their product. Is this a great business arrangement or what? In urban planning, car centrism brought about a tectonic shift in how we plan and design our cities. Instead of the human-scale streets and roads, everything is huge, wide, and out of proportions. Freeways and road arteries cut through the urban fabric. Valuable land has to be wasted on parking lots and garages to store auto industry products. Instead of compact, walkable neighborhoods, everything is far apart, so walking isn't an option. And today, I'd like to talk about the worst example of this modern era sprawl. The Satellite Mall. It's a large commercial area at the edge of town, with malls and big box stores next to the highway, surrounded by enormous parking lots. I'm building this example of a satellite mall in City Skylines, the city builder game, which is going to be free to play on Steam between the 18th and 22nd of May. As you might have heard, City Skylines 2 is coming this year, so this free to play might be a good opportunity to get into the city builder genre. Once you try out the vanilla version, definitely check out the list of basic mods, which at this point comprise an integral part of the game. So these satellite malls are home to big box stores and edge of town shopping complexes. They're near the highway and usually situated far enough from the city to be a pain in the ass to get to by anything other than a car. And this is a problem. Now I planned on getting out there and recording some footage of satellite malls. After all, they aren't exclusive to America. Unfortunately, there's plenty of them in Europe too. But my hometown, Leipzig, doesn't seem to have a proper satellite mall. There's the Ponsdorf Center, but it's right next to an S-Bahn station, plus there are tram and bus lines leading directly to it. It's far from optimal, but I wanted to go further. I wanted a stronger example. The rule instead of the exception. A proper satellite mall. A cathedral of consumerism, surrounded by an asphalt desert. Built for a sweaty boomer climbing out of his oversized BMW X8 SUV to go sit in a kitschy Fox German restaurant for an hour and complain about having to see black people at the bus stop every morning during their car commute. Around them a sea of furious Karens, overprotective parents with screaming, ill-behaved children, underpaid foreign menial workers, bored pensioners, and everyone's weird cousin wearing their gas station sunglasses indoors. The air is heavy with the smell of fast food, cheap perfume, and recent divorces. Okay, let's not get too poetic. Uh, you get the picture. To show you a proper satellite mall, I left the cycling haven of Leipzig and headed down to Boomertown, the so-called city of the modern, Chemnitz. 
Chemnitz is a case study of satellite malls and why they're a horrible idea. At the edges of the city, there is Alt Chemnitz Center, Vita Center, Nefe Park, and the worst one, Chemnitz Center. And that's the one we're about to check out. Right off the bat, there is no convenient way to get there. There is a bus line, and that's fair enough, but for a commercial area of this size, you would need a tram at the very least. If cars can get this much infrastructure subsidized by taxpayers, a tram really isn't much to ask for, and the city will actually put a tram through here sometime within the next 10 years, almost half a century after the highway was built. And priorities, I guess. But according to Google Maps, there is actually a way to get to Chemnitz Center by train. So I did that with my bike in tow. The trip ended up really nice. Uh, though the closer I got to Chemnitz Center, the clearer it became that I'm the only idiot who showed up here with a bike. If you go to a satellite mall, you'll do so by car. Period. Why wouldn't you? Everything here was built to service your car-centric lifestyle. I couldn't even find a bike rack, so I had to improvise. If you look at a map, you can see how much space is dedicated to cars, leaving everyone else hanging. This enormous car capacity does nothing but induce demand. People tend to choose convenience and comfort even when it's objectively harmful to their health, to others around them, or to the environment. So the family who would have normally taken the bus to Chemnitz Center will say, oh, let's go by car instead because it's faster and more comfortable. There is more than enough parking space and road capacity. Multiply this by a thousand and you get dangerous streets, air pollution and constant noise. This includes you as well, economics explained. I get that you prefer driving, but you should also think of the consequences your lifestyle choice has on others. So this is problem number one of satellite malls. Due to their enormous parking and road capacities, they induce massive amounts of demand. And those cars don't just come from the highway, meaning city roads leading to the satellite mall will also become congested, making large swaths of the city borderline unlivable. And to demonstrate this, on my way back to Leipzig, I biked back to the station along the road. And, well, it was quite the experience. I really hate these satellite malls, how unreachable they are, how sanitized they are, how they're a cheap imitation of real, lively pedestrian neighborhoods. And this ties into the second issue. Before leaving, I biked around Chemnitz a bit and checked out a past prestige project, the Brühl Boulevard, a fully pedestrian and bike-friendly street where private cars are restricted. But compared to the buzz of Chemnitz Center, the Brühl Boulevard was almost completely deserted. Satellite malls concentrate huge amounts of commerce outside the city, sucking everything else dry. A city can only sustain so much commercial supply and satellite malls offer disproportionate amounts of it. And this oversupply leads to closures and bankruptcies. Though with the Brühl Boulevard, the problem goes deeper. Namely that the boulevard itself doesn't lead anywhere and it's not on a natural biking or pedestrian axis. It's just wedged between two busy roads and you have to make an active effort to seek it out if you want to get there. But the Brühl Boulevard is not the only problem spot. Even other satellite malls are suffering, such as the Vita Center. There, the management is trying to get a trampoline hall set up inside to somehow fill all the abandoned commercial space. And this is the tragedy of the satellite mall. To a city leadership, they might look appealing as far as tax revenue goes, but what the shiny brochures are silent about is all the collateral damage they will inevitably cause. Now, Adam, you might say, I agree with what you say, and I do agree that you are a living god among humans who is qualified to single-handedly solve every urban planning issue on the planet. But what if someone needs to go to the hardware store or the furniture store to make a big purchase? In those situations, you need a car as you won't take home 100 kilograms of building materials or furniture by bus. And that's a fair point. I am not advocating for a complete ban of cars. Obviously, there are many situations where cars are extremely practical or even the only viable option, like in some parts of the countryside. What I oppose is the disproportionate use of and dependence on cars. What I want is to cut back on unnecessary trips. If I only go to a satellite mall to buy some socks and a pair of jeans, and maybe eat lunch, I don't have to drag two tons of metal and plastic with me, even though I could. But while one car isn't a problem, if I'm doing it, 2,000 other people are also doing it, which is a problem. My right to comfort and convenience should not override other people's rights to safe streets, fresh air and quiet neighborhoods. Though these days this seems to be the case, unfortunately. But I'm happy to say there is a good solution already, superior to the current car-centric state of affairs. There is a way to arrange the aforementioned stores in a non-car-centric way. In Mannheim, where I used to live, there is a Bauhaus hardware store right in the center, easily accessible on foot, by bike, or by public transit. When I had to repaint my apartment before moving out, I just showed up by tram, got a bucket of paint and some brushes, and took the tram back home. If I want to make a larger purchase, I can always go there, pick out what I need, and then have everything delivered from a depot. Better to have one delivery when make 20 deliveries in one trip, than 20 people all driving to the store one by one and back. IKEA is also experimenting with new, better store formats. Instead of the usual big metal box by the highway, they've launched 
built a new 5-floor store in Vienna with no car parking, based on the delivery method I've described earlier. If you want something big, you can pick it out and it will get delivered to you. Stores like the Mannheim Baumarkt and the Vienna IKEA became integral parts of the city, living in symbiosis with other businesses. If I go to that IKEA, I might also check out some other local businesses and the restaurant. Contrast this with the Sunlight Mall, where you're locked inside a retail compound at the edge of town, far away from local businesses. Stores integrated into the city support and complement other businesses and vice versa, instead of leeching off the center like a tumor, like satellite malls do. They also cut back on unnecessary car traffic, not because cars are banned, but because you no longer need them to do your business. And cars are all well and good, the symbols of freedom and so on, until you have to pay insurance, servicing and gas. And if cars are the only option in your city, you don't have freedom. You have mandatory microtransactions forced on you by the auto and oil industry. It's time for us to stop thinking in satellite malls and integrate all that commercial power into our cities instead. We'll get livelier city centers, healthy local businesses and calmer, quieter streets that are safe even for children and the elderly to get around on their own. Thank you for watching and Jesus Christ I almost died on my way back to the station. Seriously. Anyway, thank you for watching and do check out my Patreon if you wish to support me making more content like this. And I'll be seeing you next time.